I'm in the middle of a dry week, so I actually can't produce a video of our regular mixological content this week, so I'm filming it in advance. And today, I just wanted to experiment with a couple of specialty ingredients I'm left over with following our look into the tunnel vision. So, let's see what happens. Roll the intro. Hey there, the Hoder. Welcome back to another episode of Mike's Hard Reviews. My name is Michael. I am a bartender and uh, home mixologist from Kalamazoo, Michigan. I'm in the middle of a dry week, so I am filming back-to-back -back episodes um, using a bunch of different carrot ingredients that were used in this cocktail here, which is called a Tunnel Vision by Mike Perez. If you haven't watched the video that precedes this one, you can click up here right now to watch it, but I suggest you stay and hang around because we're going to try a couple of interesting things. I was sitting down and thinking to myself while researching this and actually at the time enjoying one, and I, I came to a conclusion that I realized, I, I don't know what I'm gonna do <laughs> with some of the stuff I had to make to make that cocktail happen. I have this substitute for a carrot eau de vie I made, which I call a faux de vie, um, a concept I'm still working on as of when you're watching this video, and some fresh carrot juice. This carrot juice is gonna last maybe three, five days. This, this, eau, this eau de vie substitute, no idea. So I sat down and just brainstormed a bunch of ideas that I thought were interesting, and we're gonna give them a shot to see if any of them are actually going to work, just cause I thought it'd be fun. I wrote them all down here and I'm going to reference this book heavily because I did not memorize any of these recipes. Um, but we're just gonna do this old school, one camera, as few takes as possible. Let's just get started. <laughs> uh, oh, reliable. Good to see you again. <laughs> so my first idea was a sort of um, whiskey sour, but Carrot, like a carrot, rye, a carrot rye whiskey sour. This idea sort of came from the notion that the tunnel vision is made with aquavit, which is flavored with caraway, which is a very loud flavor in like rye bread. Um, so I wanted to just see how using rye instead, uh, alongside like a carrot eau de vie, instead of an aquavit and a carrot eau de vie would, would work. I just wanted to see how it would work basically. I'm gonna start off with three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup up to an ounce. You can do really either, I suppose. Come behind that with an ounce of fresh lemon juice. It's so weird having this, like doing this in one take again. It's been a minute since I've done this in like one very short take <laughs> or as few as possible this way. It's odd. <laughs> we'll do half an ounce of our fresh carrot juice that just splashed all over my face. Three quarters of an ounce of our carrot eau de vie, or in this case, a faux de vie substitute. And finally, three quarters of an ounce of rye whiskey. I'm gonna reach for something more bourbon characteristic here with Rittenhouse rye, um, which is pretty high corn, so it tastes kind of like spicy bourbon. We're gonna do our usual one cube cracked, one cube whole ice shindig. Tap up, tap down, shake for 10 to 12 seconds. We grab a rocks glass for this one. Throw a nice sized rock in there. And there's really not that much pulp in these. Um, and these are also kind of experimental, so I'm not going to double strain this one, though I might if I was actually serving it. Oh my my, that is a very pretty orange color. <laughs> Here's how I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna taste each one of these and I'm gonna see if it beats the original tunnel vision because I'm fascinated to know if anything will beat this. Uh, let's give our uh, carrot rye sour a try. Whoa, that's kind of cool. <laughs> Hold on, I need a palate cleanser. Hold on. I'm realizing that I'm dealing with a lot of similar flavors here, so I need to make sure I'm not like blowing out my palate. Okay, let me try that again. Huh, it's not bad, but it tastes just like a really like kind of, it's, it's weird. <laughs> Honestly, it's fascinating. The, the carrot eau de vie and the rum, or the whiskey rather, they kind of cancel each other out. The, it, the rye is not as loud. It tastes just like a really, really good bourbon sour. Uh, one that is actually very well balanced in terms of its tartness. And it has a kind of robust and full body to it. I don't think it's particularly like, wor world changing. I think, you know, if I was using a regular carrot eau de vie, split-based half and half with like a sharper, more intense rye, then maybe it would work. 
but it's not it's not quite there. An egg white, some bitters, that kind of thing. That might make it work, but we're not here to deliberate. We're here to guesstimate. So we'll call this one um close, but not quite. Whiskey sour with carrot, not quite a win, but we're gonna go ahead and try something a little different that I think will suit it better. I'm gonna make a carrot daiquiri. I'm gonna kick that off with three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup. Come behind that with three quarters of an ounce of our carrot juice. This is a fat three quarters of an ounce. It was close to one ounce, but you know, we're, we're flying by the seat of our pants. Next up, we'll do a full ounce of freshly squeezed lime juice and then one and a half ounces of a rum. I'm going to use two ports, which is my preferred rum. Uh, this is a blend of a an unaged Dominican and an unaged Jamaican rum. So it has a nice sugary character smoothness to it alongside a Jamaican rum banana funk kind of flavor. Uh, it makes really good daiquiris on its own actually, but um, I'm not sure how it will work in this context. So I'm interested to see what kind of character this adds. You didn't see me spill that, shut up. We'll do our usual, or rather business as usual, ice spec. Cap that up, tap it down, shake for 12 to 13 seconds. Like any good daiquiri, I'm gonna serve this one up, actually. And um, there's a considerably greater amount of pulp in this one, so I'm gonna go ahead and double strain this. Impressive color, though I don't know if that's actually a marker of like success or not at this point, because the first one was also really pretty, so we'll have, it, it, it waits to be seen. Let's give it a taste. You know, again, my mind is struck with the notion that this tastes like orange. For whatever reason, it, it tastes like orange, but like the idea of what orange tastes like, it's it's so weird. I'll just cleanse my palate, I'm gonna come back to this real quick. You know, now that I take a second to really, you know, maybe analyze it a little bit deeper than I was, no, it's not quite orange, but it's it's not indifferent, you know, it gets different, but it's not, it's not dissimilar, I suppose. There's a kind of like familiarity between like the, the sort of earthy kind of like gentle sweetness of it uh, and the, like sort of gentle sweetness, but with acidity of orange. I'm thinking adding citrus to carrot really just makes it taste similar to orange. And depending on how much carrot you have, you get more of that earthiness and more of that sort of gentle, subtle rootiness. Um, but it's 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 actually super good. Yeah, it's got like a vegetal, a more vegetal presence to it than orange does for obvious reasons, but it's good. Actually, it works really well. It does a good job sort of kind of making the Jamaican notes in this rum more subtle, which I actually appreciate. You know what? This is a contender for something that would beat, in my personal opinion, um, would beat the tunnel vision. It's very close, you know, for obvious reasons, distinct, but it's just got good character to it. I like it. It's good. We're gonna move on to our next cocktail now. This one's actually not even a shaken cocktail. This one's actually um, a blender cocktail, which, um, I did not plan out the space for, I'll be right back. <laughs> I'm going to make what I called a carrot tequila refresher, which is going to be a blender cocktail. That starts with one ounce of simple syrup. I suppose agave, agave syrup might've been more appropriate here, but oh well. One ounce of freshly squeezed lemon juice. One ounce of our fresh carrot juice. Our first new quote unquote ingredient of the bunch. Uh, one ounce of April, which is a bitter Italian orange liqueur. I'm interested to see how this how this plays. And finally, one ounce of a Reposado tequila. All I had on hand was um, was Hornitos, so I'll use Hornitos. I don't I recently made an investment in new ice trays. I feel like smaller ice is a good option here because it'll blend easier. I can probably just put this whole thing of ice in in here and this'll work. So add ice. I'm gonna say add like maybe, maybe, maybe like two cups worth of ice. Um, I don't really know how to quantify. That's the problem with, you know, like blender cocktails. There's no way to quantify ice conveniently. In any case, we're gonna take this and we're gonna go ahead, set that up on the blender and prepare because it's about to be very loud and inevitably the edit that I'm going to make is will be just incredibly... Yeah, 
pretty good. I'll take that. I'm gonna serve this in a, uh, in fall things, an Irish coffee mug. I feel like that just, that looks, that looks snazzy. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pour that on in. Oh yeah, that's what I want. So in all fairness, that did make like one and a half servings. So maybe double that and you'll get three. Um, but let's give this one here a taste. That's actually pretty charming. I'm not gonna lie. I do like the way that looks. Um, you know, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like this one misses the mark, like kind of hard. I mean, for obvious reasons, this one is like the hardest to taste because most of it is ice and it just kind of melts into water in your mouth, which is my problem with, with you know, freezer or blended drinks. They just don't read with the same impact that a more, what I would call a properly, you know, prepared cocktail does. I think you can do any, any blender drink that you want to do shaken and it will be better. I, I am a firm contender in that belief. It's a lot of that very forward, powerful, strong tequila agave flavor with a late arriving orange bitterness, a very strong bitterness from the April. I don't even necessarily get any of the other ingredients per se, I don't think. I mean, if I look for it, I can kind of find that rooty earthiness I get out of carrots, but like, it's it's such a in such a very particular part of the flavor evolution. It comes like in as just like fresh, bright, very crisp, very crisp, cold tequila, which is nice actually. Um, it makes me want to drink tequila on the rocks actually. Um, and it and, and then it comes in with like this kind of like sort of gentle like kind of, I guess kind of like in, enhanced citrusiness. And then carrot is I guess it's a very brief moment of like earthiness and then bitterness from the April. It's a very quick evolution that lingers on the bitter for quite a long time. Yeah, in my opinion, this is a definite fail. Um, it's already, it's also already devolving into water in a glass. Um, so I, I, I'm contented to say that this is a waste of ice and um, a waste of effort and ingredients. <laughs> so last up, we need to make, um, uh, I'm gonna make a carrot martini, actually. Um, I think th the one thing that I think this faux de vie is good for. I'm gonna try. For our faux de vie, we're gonna go ahead and do um, a martini made with a blanc vermouth. And I'm gonna use a glass, a glass container for, for this, you know, to be proper. I'm gonna start off with, what the hell am I doing? Whoa, grabbing everything I see, hold on. I'm gonna start off with one and a half ounces of our carrot faux de vie. I'm gonna follow that up with half an ounce of gin. I'm using Gun Room, uh, Gun Room 12 Botanicals. I do like this company a lot. They also make the two ports rum you saw earlier. I, I just I think they make good quality stuff. Come behind that with some freshly cracked Lille Blanc, which I've actually never had before, so allow me a quick taste. Oh, fascinating. Yeah, let's give that a shot. One ounce of Lille Blanc. Can't wait for that to go bad in my fridge because I don't drink enough martinis. <laughs> And then finally, I'm gonna go for two dashes of an aromatic bitters, not Angostura. I'm gonna go for something more like Scrappy's bitters, which is more, more kind of generalist, I think, as an aromatic bitters. I'm gonna crack two large cubes of ice in here. I'm stir that for 15 to 20 seconds until the ice kind of loosens up. Oh, okay. Okay, we're on to something, we're on to something. Hold on. I'm gonna grab a coop here and a Hawthorne strainer and just pour that on in. Surprisingly, this is one of the few, few, few of one of these cocktails that has had a non-opaque color to it, um, which is just interesting to me, I suppose. Let's give it a taste. Carrot martini. You know, it's it's old school as fuck. It is genuinely one of the most just like dry herbal things I've had today for sure. Um, definitely the the driest of the cocktails on the list, but one that I think actually does kind of work and is kind of honest in its presentation. This is one of the few that I would say does actually taste like carrot. And um, as I say that, I'm also recognizing that the combination of uh, botanicals and Lille Blanc and carrot tastes kind of like vomit, which is not 
not a pleasant note to, to detect necessarily, but it is very present on the carrot, very weak on the botanical impact, at least from the gin. And uh, the Lille Blanc is providing a lot of strong backbone off of which the brunt of that flavor <clears throat> is being modified. It like doesn't quite work. I think this would work better as a dry martini. So I would go maybe one and a quarter ounces of carrot eau de vie, uh, one and, or three quarters of an ounce of gin, and then half an ounce of Lille, excuse me, Lille Blanc. That, that said, it does actually have a kind of, um, a kind of like functional, functional idea behind it, actually. I think this is something you could <laughs> you could actually, um, dare I say, get away with serving at a bar. It's very grassy and rooty. I mean, honestly, you really do taste carrot. It is very forward on the carrot. Oh, the camera died. Yay. Hold on, hold on, I'm bringing the jaws of life. You're back now, congrats. I mean, if you were looking for a cocktail that embraced the flavor of carrot, you'd find it here. I don't know if anyone wants that per se, but uh, that's, that's what you're getting. And it's not bad, but it definitely requires an eclectic palate, which um, I mean, I would argue that I, I do have, but yeah, it's weird. So this is the end result of our carrot cocktail experiments. Um, definitely a very interesting and sort of diverse lineup of cocktails, which is kind of, kind of, kind of interesting to me. Admittedly, I'm having a hard time finishing this episode because my body, like I'm drunker than I wanted to be, but certainly I'm not as drunk as I thought I would be. It's just showing up a little bit more in the amount of control I have over my tongue. So I'm gonna make this as quick as I can. <laughs> Overall, I think the one that is the most unchanged is the Rye Whiskey Sour. Um, it's one that I think is good, but not one that is changed dramatically by its uh, inclusion of carrot. I go that I was most impressed by that I thought was like objectively the best of the flavor profiles. Obviously it was the Tunnel Vision, but if I had to pick one of these own, one of my own, it'd be the Daiquiri. The one that I was most disappointed in, honestly, is this tequila refresher thing I thought of. And the weirdest one, for sure, is this weird-ass carrot martini that, despite being the most carrot-forward one, is probably the one that I think needs the most work. Very basic, very good, honestly. My camera died, so we're doing an audio-only episode for a second here. Um, we're gonna go ahead and do a quick reading from our crisp toasts, which I feel like is very appropriate for what is now an audio-only episode. Last time we read from the action section of the book, which um, I had honestly forgotten we were all the way into, and it was quite a fun poem. Today's comment from the... Wait a minute, I have an idea. <laughs> It's not a perfect solution, but this piece of junk DSLR will absolutely fill in for my uh, regular, like, wide shot camera dying. Cool. I know I kept this thing in the regular rotation for a reason. Hi, here's my face again. We read today from the section action, following our previous poem with the following toast. To quote the Nike ad, just do it. This book is more modern than I thought it was. Thank you all so much for watching this episode of Mike's Hard Reviews. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and hopefully my voice is not like, one, super loud, but two, is actually enjoyable, this close to your ears. If you enjoyed this kind of weird experimental video on um, checking to see how ingredients interact with one another, um, let me know. We can do this in the future, uh, to an extent that allows us to sort of explore different ingredients and different extents. If you enjoyed the video, click the like button and subscribe down below. Click the bell notification to be told whenever I upload a video. It's every every Friday, but sometimes on Tuesdays as well. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. You can also follow me on my socials, which are appearing on the screen or have it on the screen for some time, one of the two. Depends on the video and uh, what sober editing Michael likes to do. Um, if you'd like to cut in, now is the time for you to, uh, to cut in, Sober Mike. Tell me how this editing is going. It's a pain in the ass. Back to you, Bob. I don't know what I answered, because I probably won't remember that I did this when I go to edit this like a week from now. So, we'll see how funny that is in the future. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed, like, subscribe follow on other media, whatever you want to do. I'm going to go have some pasta because I'm surprisingly hungry. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Drink responsibly, and I'll see you around.
Peace.